allihopa, hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sailing Swedish, I'm your host Joakim and today we are going to take a look at a few words that are dividing the Swedes. These words could possibly start a Swedish civil war. These words are pronounced differently depending on whom you're asking and uh, these words are kind of controversial because of that. Uh, there are a lot of discussions whether which pronunciation is the correct one. So let's just jump right into it. First we have cakes, which means biscuit. And I say cakes, but on the west coast they mostly say shakes. And they mean shakes is the proper pronunciation. And I would say Kix is the proper pronunciation. Luckily we have an explanation to both these variants. And the thing is here that this is a loan word that normally is pronounced with a hard K in other languages. And loan words typically don't re really get Swedish pronunciation rules somehow. So that's why there is this variant with a hard K. The variant with a sh sounds, however, originates from yeah, Swedish uh, pronunciation rules. A K is normally pronounced sh in front of an E. So there you have it. it both variants are plausible and uh, even though I think kicks with a hard K, which I think is the most common one that you will hear, if, even if I think that's the correct one, the variant with sh, shakes, it's, you cannot say that it's wrong really, because there is a, there is a decent explanation for that one. Then we have lakris and lakris, which means licorice, and I say lakris which is the correct pronunciation, because I say so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think most people that watch these videos, they wouldn't need this word at all, because I think most of you are Americans or um, you are from Britain, and I know that you hate licorice. Licorice. Licorice, most of most of you anyway, so you won't really need this word anyway. Then we have Yiflar, and this is a brand of cinnamon buns that we eat in Sweden. That This brand is very popular and um, some people say Yiflar and some people say Giflar because it's spelled with, uh, it's spelled with a G. The company Pogen, they have made a statement and said that you can pronounce it however you want. There are no rules, no pronunciation rules that they have, you know, written down or decided on. So, even though there is a huge war going on, <laughs> really, I mean, really, every other person pronounces this word differently. And that's why it's a, such a hot topic, but you can pronounce it however you want. However, Swedish pronunciation rules d dictate that a G before an I is pronounced like Y. At least that's very common. We have that in words like Yilla which means to like. So there you have it, it's very common to pronunciate... Pronunciate? It's very common to prun... <laughs> it's very common to pronounce a G as a Y in front of an I, but uh, some people say Giflar and that's fine too. Just stop being such... Uh, yeah. And then we have Oregano and Oregano. I say Oregano, you should too. <laughs> By the way, that's oregano. Like, you couldn't guess that. And then we got the color beige, which could be pronounced as beige, like I do, or it can be pronounced beige by some. It's... but that will... I don't... Oh, I hate that sound of it. But, uh, there you have it. That's... 
the two variants that we have for this word. Then we have chili and chili for hot pepper. And for caviar we have caviar and caviar. And in my case I think I kinda use both but I think mostly and most the most common variant would be caviar. Then we have Ramlösa and or uh, Ramlösa which is a brand of bottled water and you will find this brand all over Sweden and actually that's a place name there is a place just outside Helsingborg or in Helsingborg uh, which is called Ramlösa or uh, Ramlösa <laughs> and there is a spring there where this water comes from and some people say Ramlösa and some people say Ramlösa and I say kind of both but mostly I say Ramlösa. The currency in Sweden is crowns, kronor, but sometimes we need to speak about euro. The euro is, I mean, it's a huge currency, so obviously you might need to have a word for it in Swedish. <laughs> and we have two variants for this word, two, two ways of pronouncing it, and one is actually pronouncing it the English way, euro, and um, the other pronunciation is Evro. And this pronunciation is kind of funny because, I mean, it's written with uh, a U, but still we pronounce it like a V. Evro. I say Evro. And it's kind of, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of hard for Swedes to pronounce two vowels uh, like this. Euro. We don't, I think that's kind of Finnish, isn't it? At least we don't really do that that often so I guess that's why it's kind of difficult for us to say euro so it becomes euro instead and lastly we have kiosk and kiosk and uh, this is a place like a stall or uh, you know a kiosk where you can get uh, hot dogs or you can get newspapers uh, depending on what type of Shosk it is. In Sweden, a uh, kort of shosk is very common, or at least it was before. I think they are like dying out now, but that's like a hot dog stand, or but it's less of a stand and more like a little house, like a kiosk. So, uh, kort of shosk, uh, shosk, and I say shosk like you. Yeah, you. I guess you could tell. <laughs> All right, sweeties, that was everything that I had for you today. I really hope that you liked this video. And if you did, and if you uh, aren't subscribing, please consider subscribing. And please leave a comment and a thumbs up. And uh, feel free to watch another video on this channel. And please share my videos with your friends. And if you want to learn Swedish, why why not stop by SaidInSwedish.com where I've got free audio lessons and vocabulary lists for you. And uh, we will see each other there. And if not, please uh, stop by our Discord server where you can talk with other fans and language nerds as well. Alright, that's all folks. Hey do!